Hello everyone, thanks for coming back to have a look at another of my videos. Today I'm going to Cortona, so that's in Tuscany, and there I'm going to be meeting an English retiree called Hazel. So I'll see you when I get to Cortona. <laughs> Great, so I just arrived at Cortona, the stop is Camusha from Rome, Termini and Hazel is coming to pick me up outside. Hello Hazel, it's so nice of you to invite me into your home and for you to pick me up from that station. I just wanted to hear your story. Why Cortona? And one question I have to ask, I mean I'm obliged to ask this, does it have anything to do with Francis May's book Under the Tuscan Sun? Cortona is probably famous for that. Well it sort of does because my second husband was of 100% Italian blood but born in Australia. We met when we were both working at Sky News in the UK. We came over here on one of those very first five quid return flights. Mm -hmm. And we were going to go to Venice. And then at the last minute, we thought, no, we need wheels. So we flew into Ancona, I think. Per chance, I'd been reading Francis Mays' books. And I read bits out to him now and again. And so we decided we'd come to Cortona. Well, actually, we decided we'd go to the lake because I'm a real water baby. And we thought how nice it would be to be by the lake. And it was April. And the day that we actually arrived, it was howling gale, pouring rain. And the lake, especially if you come up that far side of it, was about as inviting as nothing at all. So we just carried on to Cortona. That wasn't the plan. And we stayed in the first hotel we found. <laughs> I was still working for Sky at that point. And I had this idea, I'm always having ideas, I wish I could stop actually, had this idea to do a garden for Chelsea Flower Show. Because of your trip to Cortona had inspired you? I suppose so. So we did. Um, I got all sorts of people involved. I was so lucky with the people that finally got involved. We were quite hopeful that we'd got a gold. We thought there was every chance. We got a silver gilt, which is the next one down. And then the next door neighbours, the garden next to us, said well done you've done so well and we said yes you know silver gilt and they went no but haven't you read the envelope and we said no i think we were so disappointed we didn't read properly you've got best in show so basically you won that because of your trip to cortona i came back out here with dominic because of course he spoke fluent italian and i barely spoke any at all mm -hmm. when i first arrived here to live i think i only had about three words pentole Terribly and <laughs> um, mutande, which is underpants. Yeah. Not really, you know, the kind of so strange he, bedroom talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. so he came out with me. So what spurred you to actually make the move? How you've been living here for now eighteen, 18 years? years you said? I've been here, yes. Well, after Chelsea, it turned out that there was another lady involved, Fiona, and she lived up down at the lake, so only half an hour away. And I was so tired, I sort of invited myself out for a holiday for a week to stay with them. I don't know, somehow I got involved in looking at houses. I only looked at two, and this was the second one, and I bought this one. I, the first one was funny because it had a, a sort of natural swimming pool in the grounds. Well, not grounds, but, you know, in the fields around. And we went down there, and the estate agent, I said to him, turn around I'm going to get in I don't think he thought I was and I just stripped off and jumped in totally nude and that's a story that did the rounds for a while <laughs> so there were thermal baths basically no there. but no, it was cause... height of summer when I did that but it, it was a hot day and I just wanted to be in so now I didn't buy that one because it was very isolated and I felt it wasn't really suitable otherwise I might have done and it needed a lot of work but you liked this one that you live in now and yes, well, as I say, I only saw two, and this seemed to fit most of the requirements, including not too expensive. Thanks for the lovely mug of tea, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you find the whole procedure of buying a house? At that time, Britain was part of the EC, so it might have been a little bit easier. It was a whole Have you lot had to easier. go through the whole visa thing recently? 
it was a whole lot easier back in the day. And when I came on the trip to find the materials for the Chelsea Garden, we were actually staying in a place and there was an old guy who was picking olives or pruning them, something like that. So we got chatting to him. When I came back with the idea of looking at this place, everybody was running late and somehow, and I was meeting him in Cortona, and somehow he joined the party to come down and see the house and he told me not to buy it. It's called Sodo here, which I don't know if you know, Wova Sodo is a hard boiled egg. And of course, Cortona's people who live, uh, and he was born in Cortona, they look down on anywhere outside the walls really. So he told me not to buy it, but in the end I did. And he did a lot of the bargaining for me, in fact. So, but in those days it was a lot easier. And I don't know if I should even say this, but in those days, everybody fiddled their taxes. Everybody she comes back and then we've finished doing the deed. But of course, that was before Brexit and it was so much easier. But this old guy, Adzelio, he made my life so easy. You, If you declared prima casa first house, as in you're living in it, then you get lower taxes and all sorts exactly. of things. Yeah. yeah. So he arranged for somebody to come down and visit here while I was still out here and, and show that I was prima casa. And, uh, you know, he arranged everything for me. He was so such a was good friend. So it was fundamental that you had an Italian contact here in the town as well. It helped. But remember, I was on my own. When there's two of you, it's probably a whole lot easier to take on. Oh, so you on. didn't move with your husband here? No, no, I came all by myself. Um, we were divorced by that time. But um, the other thing is there was a, a guy who still lives out beyond the lake, Andrea, and he spoke absolutely perfect English. And unlike most Italians, he was very organized, always arrived on time or early. But we also found that me and his girlfriend and him, we loved swimming. Neither of us had pools at that point. So we used to meet up very frequently to go swimming at the lake. And he gathered Brits to him so you might arrange to go out for dinner with them and there'd be like four other Brits two of which were living in Cortona so you meet people like that but he's a commercial Easter an accountant do I mean that yeah I don't know but I don't think I do I think I mean I'm more of a lawyer oh, okay. so he sorted out all the you know all the all that yeah. for and me just to go back because otherwise people might think that you can still do that declared differently. No. Nowadays, it's not like that. Now, At that time, it was the valore catastale, which was like a fixed rate for that type of house. It had a fixed value. It didn't matter how much you the, the market value was. So you could do that back then. I mean, you can't do that now, but... Uh, just as well. Yeah. As, uh, well, that with hot, the that electronics and everything, as Gareth would tell you. Yes. They're very hot. Yes. I'm looking at everything. No, so I, I've you, been perfectly legal ever since then. And that you. was like 19 years ago, I think, because mm. I didn't move out here immediately. I, I didn't move out here immediately. I bought the house, but I came out for a six month sabbatical. I think it was supposed to be a three month sabbatical at the time. But I was out in the garden one day and this very small furry grey kitten came and literally led me up the garden path where I found two other kittens and they were clearly very hungry so I started feeding them and eventually mama would even come. Of course I was absolutely besotted with them. At one point a friend tried to persuade me to go down and be a volunteer at the local stray dogs kennels and I went no, 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 no because I knew what would happen. Um, I thought it'd be such a sad place. Eventually, I got persuaded to go down. It's one of the happiest, most uplifting places I know, partly because of the lady that runs it, Stefania. There is such love down there. They've always got time to give a dog a cuddle. We've even got one dog who's who's paralysed at her back end, and they built a special Carello, what do you call a carriage for her. She races around the place. It's wonderful. So you're involved in the kennels. I know you wrote a book. That's something I do know. Good. Well done, Gareth. So your name's Hazel, but everybody here calls you Adzelia, right? <laughs> so, um, so you, everybody knows you in town, I presume, because you're so involved 
in like the kennels and everything so um, you must have a really big network of friends here did you find that the kennel helped that or did you already have a lot of friends? Think a lot of the friends that i've got up in cortona are probably brits or americans or something like that because there's a fairly constant supply of people coming in they're not always here in the winter there's almost nobody here in the winter but you know in the social months of the year and i can be very social although i love to stay home with my animals and paint so you know i i like both ends of the year i hate being cold but apart from that but yes going down regularly every monday morning we used to go down there was a there was three of us to start with then eventually it was just me and graham Graham can build, make, fix just about everything. And I was basically, you know, the second in command. Is he another expat? He's another expat. And um, so he would, you know, I'd be holding the ladder. Or I do remember once ending up on the roof of one of the kennels and thinking, I've got dodgy knees. I don't like heights. What am I doing up here? But the view was nice. <laughs> to raise money, because they always need money. They get a grant from the Comune, but they always need more money. So they organise dinners. And there can be 70, 80 people at these dinners. They're great value. Um, you have a great time. And so you meet so many people that way. And then apart from the very hot months that, or the very worst months, nearly every month there's a dog walk on, on the first Sunday of the month. And so you go down, you either walk a dog from the kennels or in my case, I take my four down. They raise money that way. They offer a buffet breakfast, you know, pay what you want sort of thing. And you wrote your book to raise money. I did, I'm money? going to hold it up. Yes, This do. happens yeah, to be the Italian version. Oh, and okay, it's been translated. I did not translate it, I would hasten to add, but I've got a friend that translates for a living. She got three Italian, very literate ladies on board and she's fluent in Italian. So between them, they did the translation. And I've been told by various Italians that it's a great translation. And I've been told, you know, why don't you write another one? And it's like, blimey. Well, I didn't actually set out to write that one. But um, I did a series of articles, and I don't even know quite why. But I put them on a, I'm told it's the most read platform. I can't remember what it's called. It's something beginning with M. None of us understood Medium. it. Medium. Medium? Something like Medium. that, yes. No, but none okay. of us understood how it worked. But <laughs> six months after the, because this was written during COVID, but six months sort of further on, I realised that basically I'd written a book. I'd written 17 articles of about one and a half thousand each. I've got another friend, Fiona. She is a ghostwriter and that sort of thing for a living. So she proofread it for me and we, sh we shortened it a lot and tightened it up. I'd worked with a graphics designer. So I got onto him and he gave me mates rates for, I knew what I wanted from the cover and he did it perfectly. And he also did wonderful things with the text inside and made it look really, really professional. Then we had a launch up in Cortona and the mayor came along and he did a speech and we, in total, so far, I've donated, because I absorbed all the costs. It's like, it's nice to say I've got a book. Um, so I absorbed all the costs. I paid those, and including all the costs of the launch. We had, you know, Prosecco and that sort of thing. At the end of the day, all profit, well, everything, every time I sell a book, if I sold this to you, I would charge you 15. As the author, I buy them in at 420 from Amazon and I give 11 to the kennels. Okay. And so far they have given them just over 2,000 euros. Oh, wow. And so if you're not local, you can buy it on amazon.co.uk. Yeah, as I say, I'll, I'll put a link in the description of this thank video you. for yeah, that. Yes, that course. would be nice. Yeah. And of course, that's Buster, my first. Oh, that's your dog. Yeah, <laughs> we took about 100 photos to get exactly the perfect one. <laughs> With his mask. Oh. Yes. You retired here, basically. Am mm. I understanding yes. properly? Yes, yes. Okay. And you used to work in television, as you said, in Sky. What was the thing that just made you want to just come here? Well, was it a dream you'd already had? Were you wanting to change lifestyle? Yes, I think yes to all of that. I, You know, people used to call me a weather girl, and I, I didn't mind being called a weather girl, but um, I used to correct them because, you know, I was pushing 40 when I joined Sky um, so and I was there 13 years so I think there comes a point where 
you know, maybe it's awfully sexist still, but you know, there comes a point that you just don't look the part anymore. I was so I would say I'm a, I was a weather presenter as opposed, and it's not I'm not being posh or special. It's just I don't think I could ever claim to have been a weather girl, and I'd already bought the house. As I say, I came on sabbatical here and then went back to Sky. And also they were offering some very nice redundancy packages at the oh, time. Oh, lucky. And so I finally decided it was it was the right time. If the, cat, the kittens had been born while I was on sabbatical, I just couldn't wait to get back, basically. It was obviously a great move for you. You're very happy with it. You'd do it again, definitely. Definitely. I've still very firmly got my rose-tinted spectacles on. I love living here. I have no thoughts of going back to the UK. And um, when Brexit started to become a reality, I, I actually applied for citizenship because I've been living here and paying taxes here for, I don't know, 14 years, something like that at the time. Um, it took best part of three years, but I got my citizenship. And that probably brings us to the downside of living Italy. I hope you don't mind me interrupting just for a couple of seconds to ask you to subscribe to my channel. If you subscribe, you won't miss any of the upcoming videos and we're going to be going to some really nice places and I'm going to be meeting some really interesting people. So for example, we're going to be going very soon to Montebulciano, Frascati, Amelia, Sabina, Emilia Romagna, and also by subscribing you help support my channel it's a small one but bureaucracy oh my god it's a nightmare you know three copies of everything and i finally thought i'd got my citizenship i'd been to arezzo and and they said no now you have to make an appointment with the office in cortona it's like no really and this was sort of during covid because i remember there was a plastic screen between us and i was wearing a mask and she was wearing a mask and I was thinking, just another bloody bit of bureaucracy. And I was really surprised. She, it was like a bit like the wedding vows. She says it and you have to repeat it. And I actually felt quite emotional. And that came as a complete surprise because I was thinking, just another bit of bureaucracy. And that probably is one of the worst things about living here. But the people are lovely. The weather's, it's just as cold here in the winter as it is in the UK, if not colder. You're nodding. You live in Rome. I live much further north. But the difference is instead of grey skies, you've got sunshine many, many days. Yesterday, I worked out in the garden for two hours. It was so warm yesterday. I couldn't believe it. Quite an exceptional year this year. I didn't it? even put a jacket on and I hate being cold. That's the thing I really am scared of. I'm just like you. I <laughs> hate the cold. <laughs> So yesterday was amazing. And that's the difference between living here and living in the UK. We get so much more sunshine. So nice. Why don't you, you walk straight up here good. and I won't get in your way. Just go straight in. What a pretty house. Oh, you can definitely see an artist lives here. Well, you can see it's a lady that doesn't do red or black or indeed any very harsh, bold colour. I like my pastels. Doris has decided she's not scared of you anymore and she's followed you in. <laughs> so is Betty because they're basically joined at the hip. <laughs> they came to me when they were just two days old. Somebody near QC found six puppies, one day old puppies, in a plastic bag in the rubbish. Aww. They rescued them. The next day, quite by chance, we were having our monthly walk at the kennels and they knew i'd already taken buster and buster was less than three weeks he was, and so they begged me and i went no no i've already got two dogs two's quite enough and three cats uh but of course eventually i took two They're beautiful i was determined to give them away i actively tried to i'm so glad i didn't so glad i didn't it's a lot of work but they're just wonderful. Betty and Doris aren't terribly intelligent, it has to be said. This is my spare room and my one cat, she's tiny, she's never grown, but I have to play with her here <laughs> for 20 minutes every morning, otherwise she gets really umphy. And all of this mess, I'm trying to photograph, as I said, the, your, the paintings, paintings. And I won't put these away until I've photographed them. Good for you. 
but hopefully that will be done in the next month and then I can store them under the bed at least. How much do you think a flat like this nowadays would cost oh, if somebody haven't... wanted to move here? How God, much do you I, think it would cost I them? don't know, honestly. I mean, yeah, I love the vibe of your house. Oh, look, Chelsea Flower Show. Ah, uh, I can... I started off with a small plastic greenhouse attached to the back. Now, remember, it's zero degrees at night yeah. at the moment here. And we're out here for two or three hours round about the it's middle really of the day. Warm. It's really warm. And you don't need any planning permission for something like I this. I don't think so. We no, you don't. I have to you pay don't. somebody to take the walls down every summer. Yeah. I mean, spring, because after all, you don't. Yeah, you don't <laughs> it gets it up to 40 water. degrees. You don't really want a, yeah, don't a want greenhouse water. attached to the back of your house. According to this, it's 34.9. Wow. That's a sun temperature. And being an ex-weather presenter, I always take my temperatures in the shade. But in this case, it's relevant because I'm importing Warmth heat into the house. Into the house. Jolly good. So, and then that's the rest of the garden, if you want to see. see. Shall I open a window? You can. can. Hello, Buster. It's short for Buster Gut. And if ever a dog was well named, of course, only Brits get that. Nobody else. And it's a terrible name for a dog in Italy because. They, you know, I can't hear the difference between some Italian pronunciations. That's Betty that just joined him. They can't hear the difference between Basta and Basta. And they think I've called him Basta, which means enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it can be a polite enough if somebody's pouring you a glass of wine, or it can be quite a rude enough. This is Cortona Town Centre. Yes, and you've struck lucky because one Sunday per month they have what they call the antiques market. I think we might call it a bric-a-brac market, which is in full swing. If you walk up there, you'll see. Something weird and not particularly pleasant happened to me just before Christmas. My head started to spin really, really, really badly. I had to hang onto the table to make sure I didn't fall off the chair. Somebody said, you've got to file for an ambulance. So we did, and I went to Pronto Socorso, and they were absolutely and utterly brilliant. I was at Pronto Socorso, which is A&E, for the best part of that day, I didn't leave till four o'clock, and they were just so good and so kind, and the ambulance drivers were great, and I just thought I might mention that in case it's of interest. Thanks for watching. It's time for me to get back to the station now for my train to Rome. I hope you'll subscribe and see you in my next videos.